so I'm hearing everybody talk about Zach Wilson are like, man, he's a really good athlete, and he makes these outside-of-the-pocket, creative, second-reaction, off-platform throws. And I'm like, that's the same thing that Sam Darnold does. So let me address Sam Darnold for everybody who's a Jets fan. If you thought a young quarterback in his first three years was going to play well with two head coaches, three offensive coordinators, mono, a significant shoulder injury, a, do- a bottom five offensive line and run game, a bottom five skill group, and bottom 10 defensive line, that's on you. No quarterback was going to play well with the Jets. What everyone needs to realize, it's Sam Darnold and what you'll get for the second pick versus Zach Wilson and what you get for Sam Darnold. Right now, as I sit here today, the Jets should keep Sam Darnold and make everyone think they love Zach Wilson. Okay, I like it. Now, Chris Canty, I come to you. You host the talk show in New York, mornings on ESPN Radio in New York with, with Rick and, uh, and Dave Rothenberg. So you're talking about this literally every single day. Yep. Do you agree? Should the Jets stay with Sam Darnold or take the quarterback in the draft? No, I absolutely do not agree with Ooh. Mel or with Dan in this situation. And listen, I understand that you're talking about the talent conversation when it comes to Sam Darnold. If you put him in this draft class, he's probably the second most talented quarterback But one of the things that's understated in this conversation and what the Jets should do at two is what the last three years have done to Sam Donald in terms of affecting his overall confidence and his career trajectory. I've literally heard from a quarterback about having a career knocked out of him. David Carr was one of my teammates with the New York Giants when we won Super Bowl 46, and he talked about his experience down there with the Houston Texans. One of the things that I worry about with Sam Donald is that he's never going to realize this potential that we all saw back in 2018 that vaulted him into the top five in that draft class. All right, so it, that, that's obviously the push and the pull. Mel, we touched on that briefly. I'll come back to you on that in a second, but I want to get Diana Rossini into the conversation. What are you hearing about this? Because this really is where the draft begins, and everything that follows will hinge on this decision the Jets make. What are you hearing from them? Yeah, for now, right now, I've been told the same thing day in and day out, which is they are still evaluating what they want to do with the position. But Mel mentioning that they want to take a a tight end with Kyle Pitts there. No tight end has ever been taken at the top of the draft in the first four spots ever in a draft. So this would be a really Mm -hmm. intriguing move made by New York. And here's the thing. I've talked to people around the league about Kyle Pitts. And they say he's just a matchup nightmare for defenses. And you look at the impact that we see in the league with Kelsey, Kittle, Waller even. They've really been able to make the difference for these offenses. And if there's one thing that Chris pointed out very clearly, that's Sam Darnold needs help. And what better way to get some help on this offense than getting a tight end as as good as Pitts would be? Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.